almost 50% of the computer science students drop out before the second year begins. But why is that? Why is it that so many people fail computer science and quit so fast? And why is it that many people are super motivated to get into programming, but unfortunately they never make it? It's not because they're not smart enough, but I believe that it's one of the five common misconceptions about the world of coding. But it's not only the students that have this issue, the self-taught programmers too. People are like, hell yeah, let's get into programming. So they do what? Exactly. They start watching videos like this one right here. And then the next one about which programming language to start with. And another one on how much money software engineers make. You get what I'm saying, and that brings us to the first big problem. The distraction of social media is probably the worst thing ever when it comes to stuff that keeps you from actually doing something. You might be sitting there right now procrastinating something that would get you closer to your goal, but you chose to watch this video instead. And the worst thing about that is not that people are actively procrastinating, but they're lying to themselves and telling themselves that they're actually learning something by watching these videos. I know that because I was one of them not so long ago. I was watching all kinds of videos about dopamine detox and how to be the most productive and all these kinds of videos. I'm sure you've seen them all over YouTube. But the hard reality is that sure, those videos do provide some value and are probably very interesting to watch. But they're absolutely useless if you just watch them and never implement those things in your life. And that's exactly what most people do. They just watch hundreds of hours of self-improvement content or listening to some tech gurus. But that's all they do. They're just listening. So finally stop to only listen to people who achieved what you truly desire and start implementing those things in your own life. Of course, after you're done watching this video and subscribe to my channel, right? So learn programming or anything else by actually doing it and not by watching the sixth video about productivity or whatever. Talking about programming, do you even know what programming is? Because that brings us to the second problem of the quitters. I don't really know what I want to do professionally after school. I love playing video games with my friends, so I believe that I would really enjoy doing something with computers and working in IT. Does that sound familiar to you? Because according to the top dropout reasons, one of the most common ones is that students had absolutely no idea what the hell they're studying, and therefore had completely false expectations what computer science is all about. Apparently all of them thought that they will learn to code and make a bunch of coffee breaks, but somehow nobody knew about the incredibly theoretical side of this course of study, and that math and sometimes physics are a major part of the first years. Personally, I can't really imagine to start studying something that I didn't do at least a little research for, but... That's just me, I guess. But even more important before you start your studies is to ask yourself, why do you want to learn programming? Have you ever made any experiences with it? Or did somebody tell you that it's a very future-proof career path? Whatever it might be, you have to be aware of the fact that not everybody can become a programmer. Not necessarily because you have to be super smart, but you need to enjoy problem solving. And not just in the short term, but literally for your entire career. If you would need to describe programming in two words, Problem solving would be the best fit in my opinion. Another problem that I recently saw again is called tutorial hell. A friend of mine is trying to learn to code by himself at the moment and he asked me a bunch of times if I know any good tutorials for him to learn. But here's the thing, watching countless hours of programming tutorials won't make you a programmer. Even if you follow the tutorial step by step and write down every single line of code, you're just copying from the tutorial and you probably don't even understand what exactly you're doing. To say it like this, if you can't write a single line of code without a tutorial or any other help, you're still at the very beginning. If you start learning to code by yourself without going to school, you have to understand the basics as fast as possible. That's why code challenges are an efficient way of learning, because you can start solving problems at the easiest level and work yourself through the harder ones eventually. Also, by jumping around a bunch of different tutorials, you're inevitably creating the next big problem, which is not picking a niche. If you watch 20 different tutorials about getting into web development, you're gonna see 20 different people talking about 20 different technologies on how to make a web app. But guess what? You don't need 20, you only need one to focus on at the beginning. Because knowing a little bit about 20 different things is the same thing as knowing nothing at all. A web development company doesn't care if you've worked with a very fancy JavaScript framework or if you have experience with game development. They're looking for the one person that has the one necessary skill to solve a specific business problem for them. If you're not a pro or at least good in one particular thing, you're basically useless for a company. Why? Because a company hires you to solve a specific business need for them, whatever this might be. And if you don't have the necessary skills to solve that need, they would have to teach you everything from scratch while they're already paying you. So in the first months of you working there, you would lose the money instead of making it for them. And that's the exact reason why companies look for people with experience in one specific niche. Because if you can't solve their problem from day one and someone else can, there is absolutely no reason at all to hire you. But what exactly is a niche and how do you choose one? 
Specializing in one niche means that you're getting really deep into one particular technology. Working with PHP, for example, is not specific enough. But if you're an expert in working with PHP and also have experience with PHP frameworks like Symfony or Laravel, then you magically become a very attractive candidate for those companies who use those frameworks in their daily business. It's not only going to be easier for you to apply to those companies, because you understand their requirements and can talk about them, but they're gonna see you as the perfect fit, which will definitely get you more interviews. So don't be the all-rounder guy who knows a little bit about any programming language. Be the one Symfony front-end expert guy who knows everything about it and can push code from day one. The last problem I wanna talk about is trying to achieve everything by yourself. One incredibly helpful thing when you're trying to learn to code are communities with people that think like you and have the same goals. The most valuable thing with schools or colleges is usually not what they're teaching you, but the people you meet there. You can build a network of people that eventually will get a job in your industry. And if you keep those people around and don't lose contact to them, they can be your ticket to score a job in almost any company. Only 30% of open positions are actually advertised in job search portals, and the rest of them are filled by people that know a guy who knows a guy. Because people always prefer to work with somebody they already know, instead of going through the hard recruitment process which takes a lot of time and energy. So while you're learning, make sure to have people around you who are also learning or even better, already have a job in the industry. That will almost guarantee you a job in the future. These were my experience why people usually fail. If you have anything to add to that, please let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, it really means a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.